A piece of the work was published in um, Bust Magazine as part of just a small article that was called Threadbare. And as soon as I saw it, I knew it was a picture of me. It was just really weird. Months after that article, I got a Friendster message. I was just really interested in, in, in finding her at that point. And I was like, I believe that you've made a latch hook rug out of me. Like, is that true? It's something different. You know, make, make art out of something that's not, um, that's not really art in my mind, you know. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. You're shorter than I imagined. I know, yes, I'm short. <laughs> <laughs> I found her to be very smart and articulate, and I got to really like her. I sort of felt like we had um, a connection because, I mean, I didn't know until I talked to her later how long it had taken her to make the rug. And then also I was curious about, about her, sort of what her artistic intent was around the pieces that, that she creates, and I was really fascinated by her personal story. People in general, and women especially, tend to feel a personal connection right away with the work. It's a kitschy craft that they love, many women have done as children. And so immediately they're like, oh, I can do that. It's not a painting on the wall where it's just, they marvel at the skill. It's, it's just like, oh, wow, I used to do that when I was a kid. I was a kid in the 70s when I hear that latch hook rugs were really popular. So I didn't have sort of an immediate response that perhaps an older person would have, which is like, oh my God, this is something that I used to do of like hearts and bunnies or whatever. And now um, it's a naked woman. Mm, that's like if the whole piece goes down here. A little higher, but that's the top. I actually started doing pornography right away, making, uh, translating that in an image of pornography. I guess calling it art is more of a way to break down the barriers because latch hook has been such a craft. I don't know that it's been ever seen as fine art before. I think her new pieces uh, with the found rugs are um, really cool. I love stuff like that. Of course, like being at a thrift store, they've been discarded. And since I do this, I, it's just amazing to think about the number of hours that are put into a piece like this. And just to have it find its way to a thrift store. And then you think about, too, like who made it. I guess sort of the first thing I thought was th these women that made these rugs probably didn't have this in mind, you know, <laughs> as how they were going to turn up. You'd think, oh, I bet the woman who made the crafty rug wouldn't approve of the fact that it's being used, like her piece is being used with pornography. Or by putting like a more like explicit picture of a, a woman in the background, a sexually active, happy woman. It's it is a nice exercise just to think, like, what if the woman in the picture made the rug? And, like, I like to think of it like I'm giving something back to the woman who made it in the first place to give her rug power to be in a gallery and as artwork. Big. And I'm interested too in the way, and some of these were the photographs going in the background, I'm interested in, in how one will hide the other. It's also kind of interesting when thinking about sort of a finished piece versus how you can transform something even after it's supposedly done. I, I, I like that. I like that concept um, of being able to sort of continuously alter things. Yeah. And some people are like, 
like thrilled to make it, and some people like would prefer it as a kid because it just seems too narcissistic. Yeah. Some of my views about pornography have been shaped by virtue of what I do. If you're choosing certain behaviors, you will work out a way in your head to make it make sense to you. What did you say? I can hold it for you. Oh, I, I'm okay. I do this all the time. <laughs> I'm a trained professional. There's also the question about does porn sort of reflect some of the realities of sex and, and attitudes about sex that exist with the genders, you know, in the society, or you know, does it create and perpetuate those? I think sort of the more interesting thought is if I didn't look that way, you know, if I didn't have really big breasts, you know, or whatever, would I have chosen to get into doing this in the first place? It's so easy, like, for, for a man to look at it and it, to be like, insert yourself here. Like, she's doing something maybe that she enjoys, but in, in a public way and, and for men. Like, she wouldn't be making the pictures without the audience. With the idea on consistency, I never came into it saying it's not about capitalism. For the most part, that's what it's about. So why wouldn't somebody want to appeal to that? But at the same time, like, I would think it's a shame if somebody felt like they had to get breast implants or whatever to, to be considered beautiful because I don't have those kinds of standards. What attracted me to Whitney's work is more that, you know, you can appreciate it as a piece just on its own, but it's thought-provoking in a way that a naked picture really isn't necessarily. I wouldn't hang a naked picture of myself on the wall, but I would hang a naked picture of myself as a hooked rug, you know, because it legitimizes it somehow, because it's not as incredibly narcissistic. <laughs> I came at it feeling judgmental about mainstream beauty and about pornography and about the way women were represented. And I'm coming out of it thinking, it doesn't do anybody any good to be judgmental or tell you what you should do. So I, what I hope for my work now is that it starts a dialogue about these, these topics, but without suggesting answers.